Welcome. Today I'm going to explain you new ways to train neural networks as heuristic for classical planning. And afterwards I will show you a comparison between different state-of-the-art techniques for training heuristics. In recent times neural networks have shown to be powerful guidance for solving games, for example the AlphaGo series where they play Go, Chess, Shogi and I don't know what actually else are currently playing, and for solving puzzles like the Rubik's Cube. Thus it's a natural question, can we also use neural networks as heuristics in classical planning? And indeed we can. There has been some previous work which can be broadly classified into two groups, either per instance heuristics, where you train a neural network to generalize across a single state space with a fixed goal, or per domain heuristics, where the neural network generalizes across different state spaces from the same planning domain. Our new approach belongs to the category of per instance, and we will later compare our approaches against the per instance approach of Fab et al. and against the per domain approach of Shen et al. The contribution of our paper is twofold. Firstly, we present three new approaches for training per instance heuristics. And where it is not obvious, we also prove that they converge to A star. Secondly, we do the first of its kind comparison between different state-of-the-art neural network heuristics and also a comparison to model-based heuristics. Okay, our planning tasks are defined in the finite domain representation, which means we have a finite set of variables and each variable has a finite set of uh, values. And those variables and values define the states of our state space. And we have some operators which define the transition in between. Our search, our search at the end will use progression, meaning that we have a state, we apply an operator, and then we end on a succeeding state. And for the data generation, we use regression, which means we have a partial state, and then we backwards apply an operator, and we have the preceding partial state. The neural networks we're training are residual networks. Um, they get as input a Boolean vector, which contains all variable value pairs of our instance. Every dense layer has 250 neurons, except for the last one. The last one has only one neuron, because we want to have a single integer as output. Our first approach is inspired by bootstrapping from Arafe et al. We get as input a planning instance, a normally untrained neural network and a time limit. And as long as we have time, we start on the goal of the planning instance. We do a random walk using regression and end in a partial state. Then we complete that partial state to a complete state. And afterwards, we run a greedy best first search using our current neural network as heuristic. This gives us a plan. And then every state along the plan is added to the training data, labeled with the distance it has to the goal. This has a slight issue. Although greedy best first search is complete, it will always give us a plan that might take a lot of time, especially in the beginning when the neural network is uninformed. Therefore, we have to limit the length of the random walk. And once the network becomes good, good enough at solving the instances, we double the length of the random walk. Furthermore, we can still require a lot of time. Thus, the greedy best first search additionally gets a timeout, and if it times out, we do not get a plan, and we then cannot add anything to our training samples, which is a bit sad, and we have to redo the random walk, complete a state, and do a new greedy best first search. Then we thought, actually, we do not want to learn a heuristic. We want to predict how much effort the search, in our case, greedy best first search, has to do to solve a state. Thus, instead of predicting or labeling the states with a distance to the goal, we thought of, let's just take the expansions greedy best first search takes to solve the state and use that as label. And indeed, that's our second approach. And an advantage of this approach is that even if greedy best first search times out, we still can take the expansions until the timeout as a signal for the state. And yes, this is a lower bound to the true expansions, but at the same time, it is sufficient to tell the neural network that, hey, this state is difficult. Our last approach uses simple approximate value iteration, where we use Bellman updates to calculate the label for a specific state. 
In our experiments, we compare, of course, our three approaches against the per instant approach of Fairway et al., which is supervised learning, which is also compared against the hypercraft networks of Shen et al., and which is compared against QDBAS first search using the FF heuristic and the first iteration of LAMA. The complete search and evaluations are implemented in C++ using fast downward. As domains, we use the same domains that Fava had all already used. They split the instances within the domain into three different sets. Once the instances which are too trivial, we are not taking a look at them. Then a set of instances of moderate difficulty and a set of instances which are so hard that they could not generate training data for this. Because we don't have the training data generation issue, we will evaluate our approaches and the other approaches on the moderate task as well as on the hard tasks. Um, the most important metric is coverage. Therefore, let's just directly go to coverage on the moderate task. And we just take a look at our own approaches. And then we see that, okay, the bootstrapping approach wins in eight out of 10 domains, that's quite good. The bootstrapping to predict the expanded wins in four out of 10, that's also good. The approximate value iteration doesn't look as good, but actually it's quite often close to being the best, therefore it's also okay. And on a per domain basis, we see that it depends totally on the domain which algorithm performs best. Adding the other state-of-the-art trained heuristics to the mix, we now see that the same holds again. It depends on the domain where which approach is best. The supervised learning approach is, for example, best in depots and pipes world, hypercraft networks are best in blocks and is it all. And there they really learned something and could generalize. In other instances, there was the issue that the hypercrafts become bigger for bigger instances and therefore became slower to evaluate or exceeded our memory, which is an issue of this hypercraft network. If we add Llama to the mix, we see directly that Llama dominates in five domains every learning approach. And in four domains, we cannot say it clearly until we take a look at the hard task. And then we see Llama dominates in nine out of 10 domains every learning approach. There's only a single domain, namely storage, where Llama is not good. And that's where our approach shines. Our approach is in the moderate task as well as in the hard task, better than Llama and storage. On expanded, we have a similar picture. It depends on the domains where an approach is better than another one. Does that conclude? If you have any questions, feel free to ask them now or in the poster session. And have a great day.